Darren, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about Twitter because Twitter is literally the bane of my existence, but also something that I spend a ridiculous amount of time uh, scrolling through. I, maybe I just like flogging myself. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm going to take my glasses off for dramatic effect because we're talking about Twitter. And today I want to talk a little bit about this tweet that I released yesterday uh, that ended up getting um, a lot of people upset or it ended up making a lot of people have a lot of reactions or emotions, visceral, guttural emotions that they really didn't think about. And uh, that's kind of the whole problem with Twitter is that we spend all of this time formulating arguments, trying to make sure that our rhetoric is the first thing that we have as soon as somebody says something wrong and we immediately jump on them and say the thing that we need to say to make sure that it sounds like they're total assholes, but we never actually take a second to take in what people are trying to say and listening to their arguments. If you're um, a frequent viewer of this show, you know that that's something that I try to uh, promote as much as humanly possible, uh, that we need to actually listen to people when we're talking to them uh, and not just tell people <laughs> uh, what we want them to think. So. What was it that I uh, said on Twitter that got everybody so riled up? Well, I'll tell you exactly what it was. The tweet went a little something like this. Okay, here's an unpopular opinion. The left isn't your clubhouse. You don't get to take you don't get to turn away people you don't like at the door. That person said a thing I don't like is no excuse for handing the country over to fascists. If you are unwilling to work together, move aside. Now, I said that, and I honestly do mean that. Uh, but a lot of people immediately seen this tweet and felt personally attacked because they hold a lot of personal investment in the rhetoric that they typically spout on Twitter or social media or wherever it is. Because when we see arguments like this, like basically any argument we've been tuned to see and react to, uh, we don't think, at least not with our brains. We think with our guts, and we just make an immediate response. But if you actually read the tweet, the tweet wasn't saying anything about any specific group. It wasn't calling any specific person out. It was specifically talking about unity. And that's why below that tweet I wrote, if this tweet makes you mad, it's probably about you. Because the tweet was genuinely about people who don't want to unify but instead want to just argue with one another and take everything they say the most uncharitable way possible. So that was the whole point of me releasing this tweet. And unfortunately it, or fortunately, because it was kind of done deliberately, I crafted it in a way so that people would read it and immediately have a response, a reaction. Um, and basically the reaction I got was the reaction that I was 100% expecting. A lot of people felt super vindicated that I would say a thing, and a lot of people felt personally attacked that I would say a thing. And none of it uh, looked at any of the real context. There was only one person, suck my opinion, who actually asked me what I was talking about. But every other person on the entire comment thread didn't even bother to ask in what context I was speaking or wanted to know why I said the thing that I did. But if anybody wanted that context, I was more than willing to offer it to them. In fact, anybody who asked for that context, I gave it to them immediately. And a lot of people who didn't even ask for it, I still gave it to them because I thought that it was an important thing for us to talk about. That we pay more attention to giving our rhetoric, giving our talking points than actually listening to other people's arguments and having a real conversation about things. So what exactly was it that was this hidden context? Well, it wasn't hidden at all. If you're a frequent viewer of this show, you know exactly what that context was. And that, of course, is that if you're more interested in calling somebody a fascist or a woke scold than actually fixing the problem, then you are part of the problem. Then you're causing all of the drama that we have right now. And it's not fixing anything by doing those sorts of things. 
having the rhetoric of somebody that wants to unify out of one side of your mouth, but then telling all of the people that are woke scolds that they need to get the fuck out out of the other side of your mouth is not unity. It's, <laughs> it's the exact same fucking thing that we're railing against. And here's the thing. The really interesting part about this is that all of these woke scolds that you're talking about, all of these people um, that uh, are going around telling everybody that uh, they need to try to be better or whatever, they're always going to exist. And sometimes they're right. You have to listen to them. And sometimes they're wrong. It's just, that's, that's the way things work. That's how things are. We have to actually critically think about what people are saying and actually listen to people's arguments and not immediately take everything they say the most uncharitable way possible. That's the way Twitter has basically functioned this entire time. It's taken so many people that have been probably great friends and destroyed those friendships because they just don't understand what each other are trying to say. And hey, it's hard to understand what people are trying to say, especially through a screen. When you're trying to text somebody or you're trying to talk to them over the internet, you have this barrier, you have this wall that stops a lot of the emotion that you want to portray to somebody from actually getting through. It's extremely hard to understand when somebody is being nuanced or when somebody is trying to actually make an informed uh, take about anything. It's impossible for us to actually have a real conversation or a real argument because we have that barrier. Okay, it's maybe not impossible, but it's extremely difficult. One way that it is more possible um, is in the comment section below. You can definitely comment down below and we can have a conversation there, uh, but it's actually getting out there and talking to people in real life and actually trying to communicate with one another and getting away from never actually understanding what somebody is trying to say. We have to get out of our bubbles. We have to get out of our echo chambers and actually associate with the outside world, talk to people once in a while that disagree with us and think critically about what they have to say, yes, but also think about what they have to say and internalize it and maybe grow from that because that's the only way that we're ever going to evolve. That's the only way that we're ever going to move past just being angry little monkeys slapping at a keyboard and just pissing on each other, throwing feces, which is a perfect description of what Twitter is. Um, not until we realize that we can actually have a civil discourse are we actually going to be able to unify. Before I go, I just want to make one quick uh, statement. There were uh, three people that were in the comment section of that tweet that I released that I do want to address uh, specifically, Chris Yossity, uh, Rich, and Low T Charlie, all of whom are fantastic YouTubers, all of whom I will try the link in the description box below. You should 100% subscribe to each one of their channels because they're fantastic. Uh, but they brought up varying different uh, arguments that I think are important and I just wanna address them really quickly right now. Uh, Low T Charlie, they said that uh, I should be uh, more careful when I release tweets like this because if I release tweets that are disingenuous or at least people think they're disingenuous, uh, then there is a high chance that I will lose respect from those people. And I certainly don't want people to uh, feel that way, but it's something that I've always done is I'll usually release, say something like a YouTube video with a very reactionary uh, title and usually the uh, body of the work will be more nuanced and have an informed take, hopefully, uh, about the situation. So a lot of people that usually watch my content, uh, I would hope, usually understand that I'm trying to do that sort of thing, but if they didn't, uh, then I do apologize and I didn't want to mislead anybody. That's just something that I've always done. So the other two people I want to address is Chris Yossity and Rich. Uh, Chris Yossity is a fantastic YouTuber. You should definitely check out her work, link in the description box below. And uh, Rich, who brought up an excellent uh, argument while I was actually having this Twitter ba battle, one of the few people that always uh, tends to come to a conversation uh, with a totally level head and very good arguments. And if you're willing to listen to them, um, they usually have a really informed, really poignant uh, point to make. And they basically said that a lot of this is pattern recognition. And uh, that's what makes people see these sorts of arguments and immediately visceral, re visceral, re I can't say that word, visceral, re 
You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, they'll react immediately from their gut uh, without thinking with their head uh, to those uh, comments. And uh, it's kind of on me for framing the whole conversation the way that I did and making it seem as though uh, people should or shouldn't get offended or vindicated uh, by that thing. And I would totally agree. Didn't think about it that way. Uh, but yes, I suppose to a certain extent it is on me for framing the conversation in that way. But that's the whole point of releasing the tweet in the first place, I think, is to basically frame how we uh, are more interested in our rhetoric and basically spewing the first uh, reactionary response that we can come up with uh, before we actually give people a chance and actually listen to their arguments. So um, I think that if we allow for us to uh, have that pattern recognition just take hold and we just react instead of thinking about things, we become complacent. And I really don't think that we should ever be in a position uh, where we aren't constantly critically thinking about even positions we hold very dear and think are a hundred percent true because even things that we are so strongly attached to uh even ideas like that we might be wrong about them so it's something that we have to constantly do is constantly critically think about things and look at things with a critical eye and actually try to understand uh what people are trying to say that's the whole way that we can actually get together and actually unify and actually work towards a better society is by taking the time to listen to what people say and working with each other instead of against each other. We have all the time in the world to criticize each other as long as we're building something while we're doing it. All right, so that's my show. My name is Aaron. If you do get a chance, please check me out on Patreon. Every dollar does help fund this show. And thanks for watching.